we're going to talk a little bit about entity framework today and uh, if you've never used it before this series of videos should hopefully help you get started with entity framework uh, before we go into entity framework let's just spend a quick couple of minutes to talk about the basic idea of orms and what they are so object relational mappers right are ways of accessing data from a database uh, if you've used uh, business objects before or strongly typed data sets before you are used to this idea of creating objects that get and save data to the database so you, if you have a customer stable right you typically have a strongly typed data set called customer uh, which represents your database table and you're able to fetch data into it and save data into the database orms take this concept to the next level so there are two ways of thinking about or in a typical orm world right uh, there are two ways with which you would work one is either you would think of your business objects of or entities beforehand you would create these classes so you would create the customer class the user class the role class you will draw the relationship between them and not worry about the database at all and once these classes are created and the relationships are created you would go ahead and say okay now let's generate the database the beauty of this is that your entity model is the same and if you decide to swap your database in future and move from one particular uh, one particular database say oracle to sql server that relatively becomes very very easy for you to swap the type of databases that or for, for that matter any data source that you're using underneath that entity framework right so because you're not using any code to directly hit the the database right and just swapping the driver for the for the correct data source makes it easier for you to change the database in future so uh, that's one advantage of using an orm uh, compared to a csla or or a net tires or any other business object framework uh, the other advantage of using uh, an orm is the navigation that you get across objects so typically if you had like a user table a role table sorry a user table a role table and a user role table right in a in a typical strongly typed data set you would have to write queries to uh, find out the roles associated uh, with a particular user in a many to many relationship whereas in an orm if you were supposed to do get user roles for a specific user and if you were just supposed to if you were just able to get the user uh, uh, get the user into into the object all you would have to do is uh, to get the roles of the specific user you would just have to navigate to the roles attribute uh, for that user so you typically have uh, kind of collections of uh, related data uh, present right in the object and you can navigate through this and uh, the orm framework actually goes ahead and fi fires the query for getting those specific roles in the background without you having to write code for it so that's your basic very very quick overview of orms right and with that we're going to go ahead and jump into a very simple real life example we're going to do a very basic quick crud operation on a single table using entity framework and we're going to see how easy it is to do that so i'm going to go ahead and open my visual studio and i'm going to start a simple uh, new console application project and because i want to keep my code separate uh, as far as the business mod object entity object model is concerned i'm going to also create a quick uh, class library where i keep my business objects so to begin with let's create a simple console application and let's call it entity framework example right and i'm going to go ahead and save this and what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and add another class library to it where i can keep my business objects now i'm doing this just to keep the code clean because we're going to run through a series of videos and i'm actually going to put a web ui in front of my entity model so it's best to keep the entity model in a separate project altogether so i'm going to go ahead and say add a new project out here you could have totally kept this in the console application if you wanted to right but i'm going to create a class library a separate class library called business objects and i'm going to keep this as a separate project altogether and i'm going to delete this class one that visual studio generated for me by default and i'm going to go ahead and create a new uh, ado.net entity data model and i'm also going to call this business objects you could have called it anything and the moment i do this it's starting of a wizard asking me uh, which is the approach that i want to take remember we talked about two approaches one was you think about your classes first and once you've designed your classes and your your entity model you generate the database out of it 
or two is you think of your database you build your tables and generate your model out of it entity framework supports both so we are going to go with the first one we're going to go ahead and create a quick uh, set of tables or rather just one table to begin with and we're going to uh, let's assume that this is a car dealership so I'm going to let's go ahead and call this say uh, sample DB and inside this I'm going to have a cars table right so I'm going to go ahead and create a new table out here and the car table is just going to have quickly it's going to have three different things it's going to have a car ID which is an integer it's a primary key and I'm going to make sure that it auto increments so I'm going to say that the identity specification for this column is is identity is true and then I'm going to have a brand for the car which is going to be an anywhere care of say 150 characters and I'm going to create a model number for this car so let's just call it model and that's also 150 characters so that's my basic car table which is ready now one quick note before we save this table is that naming convention of tables becomes uh, decently important when you're using an ORM because uh, ORMs assume that every row in this table represents a car so this table by itself is a collection of cars and we need to call it cars because when we bring it over to an ORM right uh, to entity framework entity framework framework is going to go ahead and singularize this cars and create a car object for me which is going to represent one car at a time in this table right so I'm going to go ahead and call this cars you could have called it car if you wanted to but it's just good naming convention to call it cars so I'm going to go ahead and call this cars and let entity framework singularize it when it brings it over so I have my table ready now I'm going to switch back to visual studio and say generate my model from the database and I'm going to click on new connection and I'm going to say I'm going to go ahead and look at local databases I'm going to go ahead and use my uh, named instance to get my uh, database and I'm going to point to sample DB which is the one that we just created and this is the connection string that it's creating for me and it's asking me if it's okay to save the username and password which is required to access the database so I'm going to say yes it's okay go ahead and save that in the app.config and I'm going to hit next now it's going to go ahead and fetch all the tables that are there in my database now effectively there is this one table cars I'm going to go ahead and grab that and I'm going to hit finish <coughs> so what Visual Studio is doing is uh, it's generating the the data model for me and notice that it has created an entity called car to singularize the cars table and created a car entity for me which I can start using <coughs> Now I'm going to go ahead and add a reference to this uh, business object uh, project that I created from my console application so that I can start using it right another reference that I would typically also require when I'm using uh, entity framework is system.data.entities so I'm going to go ahead and reference that as well right so both of these uh, these are referenced and notice out here that what I need in order to now start working with the database is a context to the database which will op allow me to open connections and access objects inside this entity model and by default what entity framework has done is it has gone ahead and created uh, this uh, context for me this is an object context that it has created which is basically the name of the database followed by the word entities <coughs> So I'm going to use this in order to establish a connection with my database. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start open a connection to my database and to do that I'm just going to use an object of uh, my object connection uh, object context which is sample db entities. So I'm going to go ahead and start writing code here. I'm going to say sample db entities and it's uh, going to go ahead and start uh, I'm going to go ahead and do a using business objects here so that I can start calling it and I'm going to go ahead and say I'm, I'm going to call this variable you could have called it anything I'm just going to call, call this DB and I'm going to instantiate a new object of my object context now two things out here if I don't uh, if I use the default constructor of this it's going to go ahead and pick the the connection string that it generated for me automatically and kept in app.config so this is the connection string it's going to pick up and I need this connection string in the project where I'm using it so I'm going to go ahead and drop a new app config in my console application out here
and I'm going to throw this connection string right here so that entity framework gets it, right? On the other hand, if I wanted a different connection string, uh, which I could pick from any custom XML file or any other source, I could use this overload where I could specify the connection string, pick it up from anywhere and put it in here, right? So for now, I'm just going to use the default connection string that is there in my app config, right? And once this is there, I have access to all my database tables. Notice out here, I have access to the cars table. <coughs> now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to start by adding a new car object, right, into the database. So I'm going to say car, a new instance of the car object where the brand name is equal to say Ford. And I'm going to say car dot model number is equal to 195, right? So these are the two things that I need. I don't need an ID because uh, the ID is an auto increment. So these are the just, just the two things that I need. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add this to C dot, sorry, DB dot cars dot add object. And I'm going to add this newly created car object to it, right? <coughs> I'm going to add this newly created car object to it. Now. Once I've done this, all I need to do is I need to save my changes, right? And I'm going to do a quick console dot right line just to get a confirmation on screen. Let's quickly go here. I'm going to say car added to the database. And I'm going to wait for one click uh, of a key. or maybe an enter till uh, I press this, I want to see this on screen. So I'm just going to go ahead and quickly run this. And notice that it says car added to the database and let's quickly go into the database and take a look at the cars table. So there we have it, the car that we just added to the database is there. Now that's a simple add operation. Now let's say if I wanted to edit this model number and change this 195 to something else. In that case, I would have to get a car from the database and start modifying it. In that's, that case, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to use standard link queries to get, uh, get a particular car. So in this case, I'm going to use single or default. I could have used single also, right? And let's say I'm, I want to search by model number. I want to get the car with the model number 195. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and say single or default where these are standard lambda expressions that I'm using where I'm saying model number is equal to 195. So it's going to go ahead and get the model number for me. And now once I have the model number, I can go ahead and start making edits to that particular object. And this time instead of adding the object, I just say go ahead and get the car for me, change the model number and save the changes, right? And I'm going to call this say modify it to the database. And once I run this, you notice that it's going to go ahead and quickly run this. And if you go to the database, it would have changed my model number from 195 to 197, right? So that's fairly straightforward. Now, uh, one more operation that we're going to quickly cover in this video is a delete operation. So I'm going to change this 195 to 197 because this time I want to get the car with the model number 197 and I want to delete it. So I'm going to do db.cars.delete. object and this time I'm going to say go ahead and delete my car object and I'm going to say save changes. This is just a quick confirmation where I'm going to say it's deleted from the database and I'm going to run this again and notice out here that it says that the car is deleted from the database. We go back to the database and the car is gone, right? So these are your basic uh, CRUD operations using entity framework. Notice how easy it is to create uh, an entity first of all how easy it is to basically establish a connection to the database, start doing some basic searches, add a new row, get something, modify it and delete it. That's basically what we've done in this video. In the next uh, set of videos, we'll go into a slightly more complex scenario where we will probably look at uh, maybe some validations to begin with and then we'll go into a many-to-many -many relationship and inheritance model using Entity Framework. Thanks for watching.